Yeah, it's doing 30 for each damage counter. But to be fair, it has a much better name. It, yeah, 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 it, it, it does. <laughs> so, so here we see Gustavo starting off. Has that Bridget turn one? Yeah, definitely can't argue with that. So he will be able to search his deck for free basic Pokemon, put them straight into his bench, opting to go for two Zoras and a Trubbish. And he does play those Bursting Balloons to help him uh, with kind of cheating that uh, Garbotoxin lock. Yes, uh, yeah, he does. And that's kind of uh, the whole way that this deck really operates. So the idea being you attach a Bursting Balloon to your Garboda, your opponent doesn't have abilities for a turn, the Bursting Balloon then goes away, and you're free, free to do all the trades that you want. Yeah, and it also might come into handy against Lucario GX2 since you don't really want to uh, two-shot it. Well, if I have a Bursting Balloon, knock out someone else, and you try to knock out my guy, well, I'll put 60 on you, then hopefully I can knock it out next turn. Yeah, it's like taking a two-shot without actually having to you know, do two attacks to do it. Yeah. So it makes it, uh, it, it plays around that cantankerous beatdown GX. And both players having just the natural Bridget in their hand, uh, that's how you want to start off. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's a really, really strong start from both of them. So both these players are going to be setting up quite nicely here, and uh, we will definitely be seeing a good game here. Yeah, and it will be interesting to see. I think Gustavo's kind of in an advantage a little bit just because he did get to go first, so he will be the first one to use trade, will be the first one to actually maybe even get Garbotoxin out. Yeah, so that will be really strong for him as well. And uh, off of the Bridget, it looks like Birch opted to go for two Zoras and one Riolu. Now, the rest of his hand is looking pretty decent as well. He has a strong energy to attach. He's Three pretty strong. Three of them, wow. So yeah, that's going to go onto the Riolu, and I imagine then we will just see a pass. Although he might consider preemptively doing the Tapu Lele if he's worried about Garbotoxin. Well, he has that field blower in hand. Oh, he does. Although he might want to save that for later, perhaps. So I think he actually he does opt to just yeah do the preemptive Tapu Lele for the Cynthia. Couldn't hurt. No, exactly. So now he grabs that. Now I imagine he will just announce pass, and then we will be back to Gustavo. What can he respond with? There's a draw. And he does have a Bursting Balloon and a Zoroark available to him, and an Evo Soda as well. So he actually will be able to Whew. definitely get out the Garbotoxin straight away. Although he opts to go for a second Zoroark instead. I'd rather draw cards right now. Yeah, because I mean, you can uh, with those cards you draw, you can find the Garbotoxin. <laughs> yeah, and looking at these players, their records are six and two. So this is a true winning in right now. Yeah, this is going to be very high stakes for both of them. Like, uh, like a tie means that you know. I think does that eliminate both of them? Both of them are eliminated. Yeah. Yeah. So they, you know, this is uh, this is both uh, win and in, or as they like to say, tie and die. <laughs> this is uh, <laughs> really, really high stakes for both of these, and both of these guys have wanted to play mega fast and make sure that doesn't happen. Yeah, and we see the bursting balloon come down on the trubbish. Hopefully, like, well, if I do draw it, it's pretty great. And shuffling away that field blower with that end too. Yeah, there's a. It's uh, means that obviously. Bert's going to have a little bit more trouble accessing oh, it. But oh, is that... He's going to have to rely on these trades. There's one. That's the wrong Garboder, <laughs> yeah. though. Yes, it is. It uh, doesn't want to put that one out right now. He's got Mewtwo in his hand as well, but that's... Yeah, he lucky. actually plays the two Mewtwo in the list. Just really, obviously, worried uh, about Buzzwall, I guess. He drew all the Bursting Balloons that he had. <laughs> you, oh, my goodness. He has four in field and combined in his hand. <laughs> wow, that is quite unfortunate. Definitely doesn't want to be burning through that many that quickly. So And it's all for not to because Bert actually drew field blower. But he might not even play it just because if he doesn't get away to attack this turn, they both go away at the end of the turn anyway. Yeah, but then why why waste the field blower when you know you could the tools just go away by themselves. And he has got an ultra ball too, so He's looking to maybe discard another Ultra Ball with that. And we actually, we do see the counter energy in Bert's hand. That's very interesting. Yeah, it's something we've seen a lot in these uh, Zorg Lycanroc decks and Zorg Lucario decks where they play the uh, Sudowoodo, the Watch and Learn. And it's just a quick way to, like, well, Mark, counter energy, Watch and Learn, Riot is speeding, knock out your Zorg. Yeah, it's a way to get a really surprise return knockout from out of nowhere, whereas normally the pseudo order has to be a bit more telegraphed because you, know, you have to attach one energy to it and then another. Or in the case of if you're playing in Zorak Golisopod, you're playing grass energy anyway, so actually you can't even, you have to play the counter yeah. energy to even power up in the first place. And looking there, counter energy on the Tapu Lele, <laughs> uh, but it's most likely just going to be used to retreat because this Lucario is coming in hot. 
Yes, yes, indeed it is. So the important thing to remember about Counter Energy is that although it only works on EX, non EX and GX Pokemon, uh, even if it doesn't do anything else, you can still just attach it to an EX or GX just to act as one colorless energy. So then you can just use that to pay a retreat cost. Right, and there's an Evo Soda as well that could get another Zork in play. And so be able to do even more trades. It's uh, that's that's how you win games, folks. <laughs> Drawing lots of cards. <laughs> And, of course, he wants to try to get all of this out while he still can because Garbotoxin is a big threat, too. Yeah, absolutely is. And uh, that's going to be, you know, if Garbotoxin makes its way through, then uh, obviously Burt won't be able to trade. And uh, therefore, that will put him way behind considering the way Gustavo's deck operates is, uh, like I said, this kind of one-sided ability. Like normally, the, we, we just called uh, the Garbotoxin Garbodo the great equalizer because, you know, it means that no one can use them. But you know, Gustavo's deck gets around that because it's like, right, I, during your turn, you can't have it. But during my turn, I can. Yeah, and there we see uh, earlier on, he actually opted not to play the Field Blower to get rid of the Bursting Balloon. But that's because Lucario is pretty good when it has damage on it. Just hopefully Gustavo doesn't find a way to actually take the knockout on it. Yeah, which uh, he very, could very well do, given that, as we've already mentioned, uh, Lucario does have weakness to Psychic. But I think the saving grace for Bert is that there aren't there have been a ridiculous amount of items played for him. So I think even if Gustavo was able to find himself a Trash Launch Garbodo, it wouldn't be enough to take the knockout still. All right, here's what I'm hoping for, a double colorless Choice Band Acid Spray, or you don't even need the Choice Band. <laughs> uh, no, actually you wouldn't. It would be exactly enough because, of course, Acid Spray does 70, and that would double for weakness for 200 for a knockout. Oh, no. So you oh, no, uh, no. Yeah, 210. Do. All right. Uh, another one of these uh, 210 HP attackers we see so much of on the stage one. So, yeah, actually, Choice Band and Double Colors plus Trash Lanch is what he's going to be going for here. Can he find it? We'll see here. It'll be also interesting to see how many items Bert has already played. I see the double colorless, uh, maybe Parallel City in his hand. Yeah. Oh, oh, he's he's got all three. He does. Yeah, he does. He's got the Garbodo. He's got the double colorless. And he's got the choice band. But will he see it? Does he even need to use it? Do we know how? Like they said, we're not entirely sure about how many items that Bert's played yet. Yeah, but he could just trash lance to take the knockout. It depends entirely on what is available. So. <laughs> Gustavo goes for a Wonder Tag here. This kind of tells me that he's going to be activating the Garbotoxin this turn. So there goes a Cynthia into Gustavo's hand. What's he going to do? Th there's the evolution. All right, Choice Band on the Garbotoxin. Oh, okay. Double Colors on the Zork. So there has to be enough items in the discard. Yeah, yeah there has to be. There's, uh, yeah, there it is. Yeah. So Trash Lanch picks up the knockout on Lucario. Two prizes for Gustavo. Now back to Bert. How does he respond to this? And see, that's the power of Trash Lanch here. It's what, turn three? And it already takes a knockout on a Lucario GX. Yeah, and it looks like that risk that Bert uh, took with the attacking into the Bursting Balloon did not pay off because yeah. uh, it was the, the Trash Lanch Garbodo who so was able to come in and still take the knockout. And we actually see the double colorless on the Tapu Lele this turn. And from what it looks like, Bert will not be able to take a knockout. No, so depending on how many items exactly are in his discard pile, if it's enough, maybe Gustavo just takes a follow-up knockout here, which would be completely devastating. So I think there would be eight, right? 160 plus the 60 that was on Lucario, that would be knockout. So at least eight. Uh, no, because uh, this is what we were saying before, the Lucario is weak to Psychic. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Four. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For yeah, for four that'd be no. It has to be five. Five. Yeah, okay. because because the, the extra ten extra. Math so, yeah. is hard, kids. Stay <laughs> in school. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Stay in school. Win a Pokemon tournament. <laughs> <laughs> so. So yeah. yeah uh, he just did the energy drive for sixty, and oh, Gustavo's just on a roll right now. Abilities are locked for good, at least for now. Thanks to that choice band on Garbotoxin. Yeah, and so, I. I if I'm Bert here, I'm thinking to myself, okay, how do I actually get back into this? I need to look at what... Oh, here we go. Oh, is that... How, how many was that? It was so fast, I couldn't okay. see. Well, it looks like uh, two puzzle time are about to be played anyway, so that's going to be added even more in. But if I'm Bert here, I need to think to myself, how, how, what's my out to win? The, there's this gob odor on no, the... No, I actually think they have the items separated, just because I see no items in that. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, yeah I would, you'd have to think so, because otherwise that definitely wouldn't have been a knockout before. So, 
how does Gobert deal with this Garboda here? Because he could just field blower the choice band away and then he has trade again. But is it a consideration to actually just bring it up and stall it in the active for a bit, given that it has a choice band on? Uh, it, it, it's awkward because Guzma is just such a prevalent card in every deck that doing that, it's only a matter of time until, well, my opponent does have Guzma and I just wasted a couple turns. Yeah, that's uh, that is a. Uh, Perhaps a strategy that could have been used more in the past where Guzma wasn't around and so you know, that, that easy switch option wasn't available to every single deck. And uh, so you really had to combine, I guess, with something like Corner to get the maximum efficiency after, or be able to actually execute a strategy like that effectively. But of course, Bert doesn't have access to Corner, so he can't really do that. All right, he does have access to trade right now, though. And there's the Ace of Roll in his hand. Something that can actually just prevent these knockouts, because remember, both are tied at four right now. And the beauty of it, he gets another trade because of Azerola. Oh, yes, of course he does, because he can then re-evolve, uh, or use that Zorak to evolve another Zorak on the bench and get an extra trade. That's a really cool trick that uh, the Zorak decks can use sometimes. So there it is. And discarding a Tapu Lele, maybe, yes. Yes. But he draws a Sycamore and another Puzzle of Time, and then just announces Energy Drive. All right, Energy Drive, not too shabby here, being able to eventually two-hit the Zorark GX, thanks to that Choice Band. So, with that... Double Colorless goes down on Gustavo's Tapu Lele on the bench, and then he plays an N. He sure does. Now, granted, both players will go to four here, but if Gustavo can trade into another tool, then it'll be an insane end against Bert. Yeah, 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 I absolutely will. So, what do what, what are you guys going to find off of this? That is, oh, it looks like you took, got a strong, too strong energy. Again. That's <laughs> not what you want to find often. <laughs> that, that, that is... That is a two pair, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> of a strong band, a strong uh, energy I choice band. I think Gustavo's one pair beats his two pair. Uh, it, oh, he, he, the the two double bursting. bursting balloon off the first trade. That's uh, that's uh, pretty, pretty strong. It's uh, it's funny how those have found his way back to him, given that uh, how much he saw of them earlier. Yeah. <laughs> now, right, bursting eight. balloon goes down on Garbotoxin, meaning it is live, and it was of course after he used all his trades. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Uh, those uh, drawing lots of cards, able to find him the exact stuff he needs, and there goes the energy drive. Not after, not before a field blower though. So that choice band will be going away, and that is going to be uh, an energy drive for 18. Now, what can Bert do to respond here with his hand of? Well, he's got a float stone now as well, but no supporter and no ways of attacking with anything really, because since energies aren't helping, he's got no Lucario. All right, let's go detect. We can do this, real Lucario. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, sometimes if it's got to be done, it's got to be done. Yeah, but uh, really only one other deck kind of does this interaction that Gustavo's deck does, and that's essentially Glaceon Zork, which we saw earlier. This one takes a little bit more to do, but it's extremely powerful. <laughs> it is indeed. And now... Goodness, this, 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 look, at, look at how pumped up this Ryolu is getting right now. Hey, hey, uh, it's... It's attack does jab is not too shabby right now. No, and that's kind of being proven here. How much is it doing right now exactly? That's doing 80 damage. My goodness. All right, Riolu. <laughs> we see you. Yeah. We see you. Yeah, we, we see you indeed. That's, uh, I, I mean, the only sad part about this now is that, of course, the Tapu Lele is just going to knock out in return because given that it only has 70 HP, but uh, that's still pretty cool to see. <laughs> uh, if For those of you familiar with uh, baseball, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's essentially a sacrificial bunt. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. what Bert did right now. <laughs> it's... Uh, but if you've got to do it, you've got to do it. Now, of course, uh, as you mentioned earlier, Jeremy, that two pair of uh, bursting balloons from uh, Gustavo's side was really effective for him. So he was able to you know, lock abilities last turn, and now he'll be able to do it this turn as well. And he opts to discard the double colorless energy. And thinking about what to bring up, his only other attacking option really is uh, either the other Zora called the Trash Lanch Garbodo. But, oh, he actually has another double colorless in hand. So he's able to attack with the fresh Tapu Lele and actually pick up the knockout. All right, so that turn was all for naught, but it didn't really matter 
prize-wise, at least. No, no, because uh, right now, I imagine what Bert will end up doing is evolving that Zoro into a Zoroark, and at which point all of the things left to him uh, will be two prize attackers, which means that Bert will have to do the effort of uh, you know, taking seven prizes, even though he only needs to take six to win. All right, and here we get our first look at the actual number of items. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's... We're almost at critical mass, people. Yeah, that's uh, not a number I'm sure Bert will be too happy about, all things considered. And especially when his attacking options aren't that great right now. Attacking with Tapu Lele does 80, but then one energy attachment and he gets carried right back. Uh, he isn't really able to attack with any of his Zoroks on the bench, as far as I'm aware. This hand is Floatstone, strong energy, random card we don't know, puzzle of time. That's wow. Really, really not ideal. And these bursting balloons on this Garbatoxin have been putting in work for Gustavo. Yeah, they're really seeing them at the absolute right time. And we actually do see he drew an enhanced hammer for his turn as well. So, and he now has access to double puzzle of time. Gustavo has everything. <laughs> this is just awesome to see play out. It's really, really cool indeed. There's an, uh, going for another trade, and he, and he draws into another Trash Lanch, Garboda, and a Choice Band. Now, it won't be quite enough to pick up the knockout given Zorak's Psychic Resistance and the fact there's only eight in the discard pile, even the Choice Band, it would be short, but it, it's there. And uh, it's like you said, Jeremy, we're very close to Critical Mass here. Yeah, I think two more items is the magic number with a Choice Band. And right now, he could maybe try to Field Blower the Float Zone off, but. That's still just one more to try to get the Zorark out. Yeah, and so... If only there was a car like Delinquent or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be, really, be really good for him. So there goes the double puzzle of time. Gonna, looks like he's grabbing himself a, a Guzma and another Bursting Balloon. Of course, wanting again to do that one-sided turn of ability locking. And with the Bursting Balloon, will enable him to do that. And that Riotous Beating will pick up the knockout on the Tapu Lele GX and leave Gustavo one prize away from winning game one. Yeah, and I just want to say, I don't think I would have said this in 2018, but there has been five Bursting Balloons played by Gustavo. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there has. Yeah, absolutely, that is uh, insane to think about. And there goes a Cynthia from Bert, but it might yeah, be a case of... Sorry. That was a pretty nice draw. Yeah, no, no, no. Oh, of course, that was, that was on top of his deck, so because there wasn't much going for him. But I think it might be a case of too little too late still. Yeah, especially with that ability lock... He, he needs to draw a lot just off this Cynthia alone. Like, you need a field blower just to, you know, deal with the, the Garbatoxin. He does draw it, but that's another item he's playing as well. Field blower makes it 10 items. Oh, no, that's so risky. But, but does he have a choice? Uh, the only choice is Bursting Balloon and Choice Band. That's... Yeah, the, he's going for it. So Field Blower discards the Choice Band and the Bursting Balloon. He can do trade again now. He's got an Evo Soda to work with as well. At this point, he's played enough items that he may as well go for the Evo Soda. It's not going to affect his chances of being KO'd anymore, but he will just do a trade first. Well, he does need to be careful because two more means anything just gets knocked out. Oh, uh, uh, yes, of course. That's a very good point. So maybe not, maybe it's uh, not too willy-nilly. And actually, doing the trade first paid off because he was able to find the Zorak without even playing the Evo Soda. So that worked out well for him. There's an enhanced hammer as well. So this is interesting, but since he already played his supporter for the turn in Cynthia, N would have been amazing right here, even though he's staring down two Zorak GXs. But you kind of have to try to disrupt your opponent if you want to make this comeback. Yeah, and so there goes Choice Band and Double Colorless. Right to beating will only be doing <laughs> 90. It's really not that great. And there's an Enhanced Hammer from Gustavo's side as well. If he's able to find another Field Blower, that then would be enough with the... Oh, no, it's enough oh the there's the Double Puzzle. Oh, All right. Right. So okay. Double Puzzle, Choice Band, takes the knockout on anything. Yeah, and he and just game one goes to Gustavo Wada. Yeah, and he's just gonna just make absolutely sure he's gonna take the field blower too. And yeah, Bert recognizes the writing on the wall. The trash lunch garbage will, will be able to take the knockout, and Gustavo takes game one. Yeah, and again, it's just so powerful. Like, you don't really think, like, I'll just leave that garbage. Like, I could play, I could play less items, I could play around this, but throughout the game, you're like, oh, all right, well, I need a field blower. All right, then next turn, I need a double puzzle. Next turn. Oh man, I need to play this rescue stretch. Like it just 
keeps building up and up. And if you leave him with a trash lance garbutter, it's just going to happen like that did. Yeah, yeah, and uh, that's really that's, that's a risk you run into when you know you you're playing any. I, I almost dread to say any good Pokemon deck because, you know, almost all of them where I use some level of items to, you know, set up and you know, execute their strategy. And when you get to the point where, you know, you just can't hold off playing them anymore, you know, what are you going to do? You know, eventually you're going to, those items are going to hit discard pile. And that is when the Trash Lunch comes in and just sweeps through the rest of your field. Yeah, uh, that was just insane to watch. Bursting Balloon also putting in a lot of work there, just being able to do that one sided ability lock for. Pretty much the entire game. Yeah, and that's exactly this, where the strength in this uh, variant of Zoroark lies. The fact that you, you know, you're know you able to do your trades, but then deny your opponent of doing them. I mean, it's been said before, I think even Tord has mentioned this at one point, that Zoroark mirrors can sometimes really just be determined by whoever draws more cards. If you're doing a one-sided ability lock on your opponent, you're definitely drawing more, <laughs> more cards than them. For sure. And man, looking at Bert's hand here, we see Riolu as the starter, and his hands not much else. Double Ultra Ball, double N. Oh, I was hoping for the double Zora, too. <laughs> He's going to have the full. Yeah, yeah, that, that would have been quite nice, but still not actually that great pricing, two of each of those. Uh, meanwhile, the prizes from Gustavo's side look a little bit more manageable, although he has prized one of his. Uh, I didn't see quite, 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 quite what that was at the bottom. Uh, the Psychic Energy or the Zorua? Uh, I think it, oh yeah, it was one of the Zoruas, yeah, that, that, that was it, so... But interesting to point out, I think he only placed two Psychic Energy in his list. Oh, oh, okay. Is that, is that, that's either a two or a three. It's, it's a two. Over two. Oh, no, okay. oh yeah, no, it is actually, it's yeah. a two, yeah. Oh, so that actually, that, that could be problematic for him, actually. Had to focus on hitting early with Zorark and then maybe follow up with uh, the Trash Latch later on, so... Oh, this is awkward, though. That Mewtwo staring down that Riolu start. And one thing with Riolu, usually you attach the strong energy turn one because Tapu Lele doesn't really knock out. I got 70 HP, bro. Like, it's not going to happen. Yeah, yeah. So, but, uh, I mean, you know, but now that's a threat. It's like, you know. Yeah, you attach an energy. Mewtwo does 80 damage to you. Yeah, and that's really not good at all. So. And yet we actually see that he doesn't even attach to the bench one. He's that afraid, like, yeah, I don't want to lose this energy. No, and because uh, all it will take is for Gustavo to have a Guzma, and then, you know, that's it. Wait, is that? Oh, my goodness, that's not ideal from Gustavo at all. He just, oh, no, he has a tapu later, though, so it's kind of interesting that he opted to go for the double colors plus bursting balloon on the active straight away in spite of having a tapu Lele. Yeah, uh, I don't know. it could just be the power of Mewtwo against Lucario. Unfortunately, though, for Gustavo, Bert's hand is pretty good. There's the Lucario GX, the strong energy. I think there's two Lucario GX. And then a Cynthia as well. And that could just take the knockout straight away, thanks to strong energy pushing over the 120 damage hump. Yeah, yeah. So with uh, the <laughs> the Aura Strike uh, uh, Attack, I believe. There's the first one that does the 90 more if uh, the, the Lucario was evolved that turn. Yeah, with strong energy, that can go up to 140, and that actually, yeah, like I said, would be enough to take knockout on the Mewtwo, whereas otherwise, uh, you know, uh, other 120 damage doing partners for Zorok might not be enough. Yeah, so that's interesting. He actually chooses not to evolve, and he attaches to the benched one as well and plays a Cynthia. So really just like... I don't want to get hit by this bursting balloon again. That really sucked last game. Yeah, yeah, that, that was a really sort of punishing move for him. So he's being very, very cautious about it this time and trying to make sure that he doesn't end up with a repeat of that. But uh, Cynthia, he wants to see. Enhanced hammer here. And Lucario and Pseudo Wudo as well. And a Zoroark. That was actually a really, really good draw. All right, but what do you discard with Zoroark? I, I kind of want to keep all these. Yeah, I mean, he's considering Pseudo Wudo. Maybe he's thinking to himself that it's not. Yeah, there, there, there you go. Ultra Ball and a double colorless. So again, he's <laughs> faced with that decision of like, I, I can Ultra Ball, I'll get another Zorak out, but that's two more cards to discard and another card to discard from trade. I might just pass the turn. Yeah, uh, although he doesn't pass the turn before playing that enhanced timer he got, being able to discard the double colorless on the Mewtwo, meaning that not only is the Mewtwo not an attacking threat anymore, but it can't retreat either. That's quite important. It means that the, uh, Gustavo needs to find another resource in order to be able to get that Mewtwo out of the active. It's, it does have a retreat cost of two. It's not the easiest thing to retreat in the world, and especially not now that there's a choice band going on it as well. Yeah, uh, it's 
actually interesting to see that usually with decks with Garboder, you see four Floatstone. It's the main point. Like, okay, I want my Garboder to have free retreat because I don't want to get stuck active. And it's probably the best utility card for it. So I was playing one Floatstone, but that's usually because Bursting Balloon just falls off at the end of the turn. Yeah, so that's it. And if you play a Floatstone which doesn't fall off at the end of the turn, you can't do that whole, the whole point of this deck, which is you know, to do that one-sided ability lock just uh, whilst your opponent tries to do trade, and uh, you can whilst they can't. Now, there's something I really want to draw attention to here, which has happened. You do see there that there was a Sycamore discarding a Psychic Energy just then. We've already seen that the other Psychic oh, Energy... No. Exactly. The other Psychic Energy is in Gustavo's prizes, and... That means he's essentially conceding the ability to do Trash Launch, and he kind of recognizes that because there's no other Trubbish on the bench either, so he's fully committed to just attacking with Zorox for now. All right, uh, that's what we're seeing here, and hopefully this Mewtwo can go the distance against this Riolu and Lucario's that Bert will most for surely come back from. Yeah, it did. It's, uh, it's what he's going to have to do. Uh, there is now a debate for Gustavo as to whether he wants to do a double puzzle of time now. He does have it ready, so it is an option for him. And it looks like the answer is yes. He's just going to go for a double colorless and a bursting balloon. All right, I like this here, taking the knockout on the Riolu. It's just one less threat you have to worry about, especially when you don't have access to your psychic energies. Yeah, exactly. And uh, the fortunate news for Gustavo is that the psychic energy is at right at the bottom of his prizes. So in theory, it should be the next prize card he takes, unless he takes them out of order for some weird reason. All right, Lucario coming down, evolving the Riolu, turning on its attack, dealing 120 damage, 140 with the strong energy. And remember, that's a knockout on the Mewtwo. It, it is. Double colorless as well. Kind of seeing like, well, yeah, there's nothing you can really do. You don't have a Trash Lanch in play. Yeah, so he uh, feels a lot less uh, threatened by, you know, that because he knows that there's no Trubbish on the bench either. So not even, ne it, it's going to be at least two turns before he sees the Trash Lanch come out. So that's going to be really, really good for him in order for his own game plan to be able to think ahead and uh, try and play that out in the most effective way. Now, we do see that uh, he has, he's gone for the Ultra Ball there and after to go for another Riolu. And after that, we'll just play the Sycamore, finding more energy and another Lucario too. And it looks to be an Evo Soda. So this turn's been pretty good for him, even without the use of abilities. Uh, but Gustavo, remember, he plays two Mewtwo from Evolutions. And there's a lot of energy on that Lucario right now. Yeah, there is. There's a free, in fact. So now all he needs is one more strong energy. And he can even use Lucario's GX's second attack. It's not used very often, but it's still you know, decent enough. It does do 130 damage for two fighting and a fire, and a colorless even. Yeah, and there we see Gustavo playing the N. Both players will go to five, but Gustavo does have access to trade. So he, yeah, with any luck, here, you'll be able to see more Zoroarks and then be able to do even more trades and continue that trade chain that we see Zorark players so often do. Now, he's got an Enhanced Hammer, a Field Blower, and he's got one puzzle at a time, but I don't see another Zorark yet. The Enhanced Hammer is actually very good right now against Lucario, especially if he doesn't get a way to actually make a good, profitable attack. Yeah, because he can, of course, use that to get rid of either the Strong Energy or the Double Colorless, whichever he feels like it is the bigger threat. And it looks like he's starting the Strong Energy is the bigger threat because now Lucario can only do, do Cantankerous Beat down. Oh, no! Oh! Uh, wow, interesting, okay. So he actually does opt to go for the double colorless, and uh, it, this means he also does less of an energy drive, so it's interesting that he's opted to go for that instead of the strong, en the strong energy. Well, okay, it could be a sacrifice to King Tankerous speed down. Yeah, but putting, yeah but putting more damage on it means it's just a more dangerous attack, and the two strong energies on it, uh, that's doing 190 damage, folks. Right. Oh, oh dear. Yeah, three. No, not more. Two, two twenty. Is that, is that Six right? Six times three. Yeah, <laughs> well, no, yeah, 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 40, yeah, yeah, 20. 20, yeah. Once again, maths is hard. Stay in school, and then you can be clever and win Pokemon tournaments. <laughs> 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 Never let anyone tell you maths wasn't useful. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And okay, there's the Cynthia from Bert. 
He does throw a counter energy. I imagine that would be used very quickly as trade fodder, given that he's already discarded his Tudor Wudo. I mean, or maybe I guess if he wants to feel like, feels like using it as a one color energy to retreat again, I guess that's an option too. And there's the field blower discarding the parallel city and the bursting balloon off the Tapu Lele. It so that's pretty huge. That means that uh, he doesn't have to worry about uh, Rio Lu or the Lucario rather taking another big hit off of this uh, Bursting Balloon, which would then make it easy for a Zorok to actually follow up and KO. So that's actually really, really important that he was able to hit that. Yeah, as of right now, a Zorok would need a full bench and a choice band to take a knockout on this Lucario. And that's a lot to ask for. That is a lot to ask for indeed. Uh, and there goes a Tapu Lele 2. Uh, that's going to be fetching a Guzma, so getting that ready for next turn, because, of course, uh, but quite cleverly assuming that Gustavo will have a way of uh, re-triggering re the uh, Garba Toxin uh, by attaching a tool to the Garba Bodo, so just make, getting that ready now. And there is the Cantankerous Beatdown. First, first time on stream. First, first time on stream, yeah, there it is. At least for this weekend. Yeah. So that's one bench Pokemon for Gustavo, so that will be uh, one attack for an N, and he will just play it straight away. So, I, I have to think that King Tanker's Beatdown is the best GX name they have printed so far. I, tweet hashtag play Pokemon if you think there's a better GX name because I, I can't find one. Uh, if, if I think of one, I'll let you know. <laughs> I mean, you know. All right, so there's the N. So Gustavo only drawing five cards. Granted, he does have access to trade. Maybe he can get some more Zoraks rolling. Now we do see another Zorak. There's a Mewtwo as or no, that's not a Mewtwo. That's a Garboder. Yeah, is it one of each? In fact, he's got a uh, Trash Lanch one Ooh, and another Zorark. Oh, it's so many trades going on here, but none of them drawing him into exactly what he needs. He needs Choice Band, another Basic, and a Double Colorless, and he's got two out of three. He has one more. No. no. A swing and a miss for Gustavo as he gets the double colorless and Azora, but does not find the choice band to pick up the knockout. Very unfortunate for him. So he's got. He's actually up for the permanent ability lock now, putting the float stone onto the Garbatox and Garboda, and going to have to be content with just doing right beating for 120. Granted, to be fair, Bert's hand is not very flashy at all. Especially not given he, especially now given that he doesn't have access to trade as well. But he at least does have that energy to use Cyclone Kick to take the knockout on Zorark, going down to one prize. That is, that is, that is pretty huge. Now, what it's gonna, what it's gonna come down to right now is whether this Garboda, Garboda can stick even longer. So, you know, Gustavo needs to find a follow-up attacker of some sort. And uh, that will be one of his Zoroarks. As long as he get an energy on one of them, that will be enough for a knockout. But it looks like... Oh, no. So, oh, wait. Did he get... Okay. I was about to say uh, if he got, like, the psychic energy from the prizes or not. Because the other one's still in the discard, and I'm not sure if he's used Puzzle this game or not. Uh, I, uh, it's hard. Uh, he's. I think he used the yeah, first two. Yeah, he's used. He's not all of them. He's not used all of them. He has used two of them, but his hand has not got much to work with right now, given that he has to sort of permanently ability lock himself and uh, by attaching the float stone. He wasn't able to do that one-sided lock he would have really liked to do. So he's kind of stuck with the hand he's got. Yeah, he just Guzmud up a Zorark and passed. That is not good at all. But although it although, uh, looks like... And that was such a risky play, too, because he already has five Pokemon in play, a double colorless, and just an, an, like, ah, oh, man. Are one prize left with Bert, too. Yeah, are these two just draw passing against each other? I think Bert has an N in hand and, like, a puzzle of time, but he doesn't really want to use the puzzle of time because he's so low on resources right now that... It's better if he just draws the other puzzle. Yeah, so you'd rather just like wait on it. Plays in Parallel City, announces pass. A what, Trubbish. One card that could be, oh, there's the puzzle of time. Yeah, so that, Th that has to be game. Yeah, it has to be. That will seal it for Bert, no doubt. Just needs to make sure he has the right access to the right resources in his discard pile. But he can just get a Guzma and then KO one of the Zoroarks. Yeah, there it is. So. Guzma will get the knockout on one of the Zoroarks. No, nah, he just retreated. Oh, 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 oh yeah, well, that, of course, he has one prize left. <laughs> yeah. So now ta -da, ta -da, that will be game two, and we'll be moving on to game three. Fifteen minutes left on the game. First, he'll actually will be able to guarantee use it and won't get end away.
All right, field blower doubles. Double field blower doubles Zorark. Oh my goodness. And that means he doesn't have any field blower in his deck. He, could, he only plays two? He only plays the two. That is a heartbreaker and a half. Man, these prizes uh, for these game threes on stream have been intense. Hey, how how does Bert even deal with this? Uh, let's hope he doesn't draw Burst Nubal. <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh, Wow, that I, I honestly don't even. I'm, I'm actually speechless. Like, I, I don't even know how to re, how to react to that. That is, how do you even? I, I just want to see his reaction now. We're gonna need, he's going to look through and he's going to realize. And once again, it's going to be one of those moments where you just look through and you kind of just want to cry. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Gustavo's turn one. Classic, classic turn one. Tapu Lele getting the Bridget and then playing down another Trubbish from his hand. So his board is looking mighty fine. Yeah, he, uh, he can argue that it's almost, uh, there's hardly a more perfect board than the one he has right now. Uh, and he's got, because even having the Tapu Lele down, even though you could like put something else there, Tapu Lele is fine as an attacker on its own. So like, yeah, this is as about as good a turn one as Gustavo could ask for. Meanwhile, Bert is really, really agonizing over what to do here. Ultra Ball and discarding two items as well. So three items in the discard already. Having to attack with Lucario a lot early game from what we've seen the past two games. It's going to be a little bit of a struggle. But again, one Psychic Energy in Gustavo's deck. Yeah, that's going to be the saving grace from uh, Bert's side. Uh, although it's not going to be much consolation when you have two Field Blower priced. There goes the Bridget going for two Zoras and a Riolu. I don't even know if he noticed yet. That was a pretty quick look through. It, it was, but he could just be uh, looking for key things, looking to save time. He will be aware that there's not a huge amount of time left on the clock, so he's going to be a little bit careful about you know spending too much time searching through things. He's got to have that right compromise. I just got to look at Gustavo's hand. It is triple Zorark N. What? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, Gustavo, I know you wanted to show off in your home country, but come on. <laughs> as, uh, as, so, not only does Bert pry two Zoroarks and two Field Blowers, Gustavo has the triple Zorark after the Bridget Insane start as well, and, uh, and a supporter to follow up afterwards as well. What is going on? Bursting Balloon and an Ultra Ball to go with it from the end. Trade gets the one Psychic Energy. Granted, he's still looking for a double colorless. He still is. He's Second trade, one more to go. He's not found one yet. He's deciding what to discard for his third trade. He gets uh, the uh, double uh, colorless. colorless. Two perfect turns. What? Two perfect turns in a row for Gustavo means that he is going to take a commanding lead in this game, and he's not even taken a prize yet. What? <laughs> This is insane. This is absolutely unbelievable. Wow. <laughs> I, I, I'm speechless. I yeah. can't. It's, it's like, exactly like I was before. Like, yeah, what, what do we even say to something like that? Uh, oh, man. <laughs> He's got the Garbo Garbodo. He's got the Bursting Balloon. He's got the Double Colorless. Yeah. <laughs> even Bursting Balloon's the Zorak as well. Like, why not, right? Why not? Just, yeah. And Rice beating KO. <sighs> Now, uh, again, just talk about saving graces here. If Bert's able to find a Lucario, he actually does get the one-hit knockout on the Zorox. That's pretty good for him. But whether he's able to find it or not is another matter, especially with his hand looking like it is. Oh, no, he's got the Ultra Ball. Yeah. So, okay, he, he's, he's, so he's got the return knockout at the very least. Or, or does he? Is that, is that not an Ultra Ball? It is. Uh... Yeah, it definitely is. Uh, okay, yeah. So, so yeah, he's got the KO then. So he'll be able to discard. And, it's, and it, it's crazy because even Bert's hand is very good turn two hand. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, getting a turn two two prize knockout is not bad at all. It's just both players drawing very, very well. It's just unfortunate from Bert's side that he doesn't have field blowers or Zorax to work with. Although, having said that, He's now going to take two prizes. Is he going to pick up one of the field blowers off of this? Oh, man. That, that's that's going to be, I think, the deciding factor right now. 
Yeah, I'm trying to remember where exactly the field blowers were placed. Well, I mean, we'll see it in a bit here. So he's going to take this knockout. And then, yeah, two prizes taken. Let's have a look. Did he... What did he get? Looks like... Evo Soda... Oh, he did get a field blower. Yes. Yeah, All so, right. Yeah, so he hasn't got one of uh, his extra Zoroks out, but I mean, so that will help a lot already. So he has access to the field blower there. And if Gustavo does not play N, then he's going to be solid in having abilities for next turn. And indeed, Gustavo goes for Cynthia. Yeah. Uh, opting just, I'm just going to try to draw as many cards as possible and save N for later in the game. Maybe, maybe, not, maybe not thinking, obviously, or I mean, not knowing how could he about uh, Bert's field blower prizing situation. Yeah, and I think there was only three items in uh, Bert's discard. Yeah, he's that turn one Ultra Ball. Is so he, Gustavo's really searching for a uh, choice band right here. Which he does not find. He has got Ooh. trades. He used both of them already. Oh, dear. And, oh, he, he goes for the permanent ability lock again. He's put down the float stone onto the Garbatox and Garboda. Oh, it is the knockout. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so he has got it. Right. So, again, there must have been a few more than three then. But, he, yeah, uh, Bert might be able to leverage this. He was able to do that rerun really the last game where you know, Gustavo wasn't able to do trade. And so he was able, Bert was able to come back and actually win. Can he leverage it the same way here? Although... Maybe not doing it straight away because he actually does have the fuel blower, like, like we mentioned earlier, getting off the prizes ops to just play it and just discard the bursting balloon from the active and the float stone on the bench Garbodor. Yeah, there's the Evo Soda. So Bert will be able to use his first trades of the game. He will. And uh, but not before playing as Cynthia. He really, really wants to find a double colorless and another bench Pokemon. If he does that, he has to knock out on the Garbodor, which will be really good for him because then Trash Lanch won't be a threat for at least two turns since Gustavo does not have any Trubbishes down. Yeah, he'll be sitting pretty there, uh, especially just because Gustavo's deck isn't really that well positioned to attack against opposing Zoroks. I mean, uh, not in, in the late game, not necessarily, unless you have a Trash Lanch Garbodor up. Ooh, and, uh, and there's the double colorless. Fifth card of the sixth for that Cynthia. I don't see a basic Pokemon though. There's the Mallow. There's the oh, Mallow. But he's, oh, he's trading it away. And gets the Tapu Lele. Th that's it. That's that's the one. So now he's got enough and he will be able to do Ryzer's Beating for 120 and pick up the knockout. He might even consider just going for Tapu Lele for Bridget just to have that as like the the really easy discard fodder. That's uh, something that we see players do sometimes just to, as a very easy deck fin. See what he goes for. This game is like a boxing match. Players are hitting knockout blow after knockout blow. Yeah, yeah neither, both of them rather being completely relentless in their moves. And he actually doesn't look like he has any more Bridget's to search for in his deck. So he opts to go for the Guzma instead. And now he might want to consider stopping trading because I don't think he has anything good to discard which isn't an item. And he really wants to make sure that he isn't putting too much fuel in his discard pile to make uh, any future trash launches do more. And now he's also pulled one of his two Zoroks out of the prizes. All right, things are completely flip tables now. That one big knockout from uh, Lucario able to get him right back into the game by finding that field blower now uh, Gustavo, from his t point, does have a decent turn himself. He's got a Guzma for the Riolu. I actually like this a lot because yeah. he's put down the three prizes. So he'll need to take this knockout anyway. It's essentially easier. And it's the biggest threat to take a knockout on your Zoroark. And the boxing match continues. This is, again, just you know, ideal turn after ideal turn after ideal turn. And uh, it's really, really hard to say who's actually going to actually end up taking this because, I mean, tempo-wise, Gustavo has, like, the first knockout. But you know, if depending on the kind of effective turn that Bert may have, who knows? You may, he may even end up being able to take a prize, deny Gustavo one, and actually end up winning this game. This is down to the absolute wire. And talking about down to the wire, we have a little over four minutes left to go in this match. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm I'm moving to the edge of my seat. I, I, <laughs> I, I, this is not a lean back game, ladies and gentlemen. And if, uh, for all of you guys watching at home, I recommend sitting on the edge of your seats as well, because uh, otherwise you might you might blink and miss. <laughs> what does Bert do? It's, uh, yeah, the right. So, so he doesn't have access to a double colorless in his hand. Not having the fuel blower means that Garbotoxin is just going to stick there. But remember, he field blowered away the floatstone a turn before, 
So this Garbodor is stuck active unless Guzma is played. And a really effective turn there for Gustavo because Bert actually had to just Guzma and pass. So that means, and he had no energy. Well, he has the strong energy, but can't attach that. So those Zoroks are really... Wow. Gustavo just drew the second puzzle time off the last trade for his turn. No. Can he win the game this turn, though? I don't think he no, can. No, no. But that's still... Being able to get a double colorless down and start attacking with a Guzma, like... It's essentially what you need. Not only that, but of course you can use the puzzle of time to get back the float stone too. If he's not, oh, that's right. Yeah, because because at this point I think he's fairly solidified about his position. He's not going to be worrying too much about you know keeping the ability lock going permanently, uh, uh, or rather non permanently. So yeah, he's just perfectly content here to get the float stone and just really force force um, Bert to have Field Blower uh, at some point, rather than be being able to give Bert the option to wait a turn. There's Ryder's beating for 120. Does Bert have an out? I don't think he does. His hand is full of supporters. So there's Acerola, kind of a car that can save him a turn, but that does nothing for him in the long run. No, uh, no, it really doesn't. It can bring up another Zorok pass. That doesn't help him. He he doesn't have access to Field Blower, so that's really not going to be boding well for him either. Bert's back is definitely against the wall. It buys him a turn, but another turn means Gustavo can get Trash Lanch in play, can get a few other cards, and essentially try to take over this game. And he rebenches the Zora, and yeah, just again announces pass. Another double colorless drawn for turn from Gustavo's side, and uh, that's going to be just an end. All right, this end is essentially kind of neutral for both players. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. I mean, both players are drawing similar numbers of cards, but I think what Gustavo is trying to do here is just try to force Bert to miss because he was able to announce an attack here and then Bert can't retreat, the game's over. So, oh, but he uh, looks like Bert does have a Guzma. Guzma and a puzzle time as well. And, oh, and a Sycamore. Uh, see, this is very tricky because Guzma guarantees him, him being safe for another turn, but it doesn't really win him the game. He needs to energy to actually attack to win in order to do that. So is it a consideration to just play the Sycamore here instead of the Guzma? And well, so it's essentially the same uh, decision he had last turn. Yes, it is. By playing the Acerola and uh, not playing the Sycamore. So it kind of doesn't make sense if you don't play the Guzma here. <laughs> Be, be, yeah, granted, be, because he's... And they and, wow, double yeah, so puzzle from Gustavo. And there you have it, down to the wire, 45 seconds left in the round. Gustavo Wada, 7-2, going into day two here at Latin America International Championships. <laughs> Congratulations to the, the homegrown hero, Gustavo Wada, able to take down the highly accomplished Burt Walters in this uh, best of three series. And uh, that sigh of relief that he just took, <laughs> leaning back in the chair, like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Bert made him work for that. Like, yeah, there was no question about it. Huge commiserations to him. He's uh, yeah, got to be happy with his result, result as well. Although he won't be able to make it into the day two, he still performed impeccably. And uh, But yeah, Gustavo must just be high on life right now.